In my opinion, the build that I'm going over in this video has been one of the best builds in the entire game for an entire year now. I used this back in my King's Fall day one, and it was insane then. And now I would say parts of the build are way better. The build, as you could probably tell in the thumbnail and title, is the Verity's Brow Infinite Healing build that I made a while ago. And we're going to be pairing this with Sunshot because Sunshot is insane now. All in all, the cycle of this build is super simple and extremely strong. You're going to use a healing grenade to get restoration times two, then immediately after you use your melee to proc radiant, and then from there on out, all solar weapon and ability final blows are going to extend restoration and radiant timers endlessly. With Verities, we're also getting increased grenade regen with stacks of death throws, and these stacks increase any time that we get a solar weapon final blow up to five stacks in total, where we're getting a 250% additional base regen increase. As long as we have one or more death throw stacks, throwing our healing grenade is also going to give allies within 20 meters of us the buff Field of Flames, which then gives them a 10 times increase in their grenade recharge rate, which is wild. So this is an amazing build that's really easy to use that helps keep people alive, including yourself, but it also seconds to give players grenades much more often. And if that wasn't enough, with heavy ammo finders and scouts, we can generate heavy ammo for our team every 16 kills with Sunshot. The build is insane and Sunshot is definitely meta right now, so I wanted to get this build out as soon as possible for you guys. As always, if you enjoy the breakdown and the build, make sure to drop a quick like and sub down below. Now onto the build itself. As you guys are probably well aware already, we're using Sunshot as our main ad clear weapon. This recently got a 20% buff to all red bar combatants and a 75% buff to all orange bars. I think last season or the season before, it got another 20% buff to red bars. And like over a year ago, it got a 40% buff to red bars with all other exotics. So this thing is insane now. Even when 20 under power, you're typically two or even one tapping enemies in the head depending on if you have the radiant buff and if they're pre-damaged from the sunshot explosion so this is going to be your main ad clear weapon and it's going to feed directly into verity's brow to give us death throws stacks death throws give us stacks anytime we get a solar weapon final blow every time we get a stack we get increased grenade regen and grenade damage with the healing grenade we're obviously not capitalizing on that damage but more important than that we can use this as a support exotic because anytime we have a stack or more of death throws and then use our grenade near an ally within 20 meters those allies are all getting 10 times the grenade regen for i think five seconds so they can also get a ton of grenades off as we're constantly healing them with this exotic as well hopping into the solar subclass obviously make sure you're running well of radiance there's really no reason to not be on well if you're playing a solar lock Depending on the situation, you can switch up and go something like Phoenix Dive if you want that quick healing for just yourself. Because it's more of a support build, I would recommend running Healing Rift, especially for you and allies, especially if you're taking this into a day one raid race to help support everybody on your team. As far as melees go, we only really need our melee to proc Radiant for us. Celestial Fire has really good tracking at really good ranges. It's pretty much impossible to miss this melee. So I would tend to run this over Incinerator Snap. But Incinerator Snap does have a much shorter base cooldown. So that would be a reason to go with Incinerator if you wanted it. I would just go Celestial. Lastly, for a grenade, we are obviously running healing grenades, and that's going to pair with our first aspect, which is Touch of Flame. With this, our healing grenade and some other grenades are getting buffed, but specifically for healing grenades, this increases the amount of cure that it provides when it initially hits us. And instead of giving us restoration times one, it now gives us and teammates restoration times two, which I think is still 65 HP every single second. After this, I tend to just run Icarus Dash for movement. Even in endgame content, this is still pretty useful. Moving around is kind of underrated, so I would highly recommend just staying on this. I tend not to use Heat Rises. Ember of Empyrean is our first fragment and is by far the most important. With this, Solar Weapon or Ability Final Blows are going to extend Restoration and Radiant effects. This does also work with the Solar Elemental Orbs, so that is very nice, which means as soon as we get Radiant, which is the 25% increase in our weapon damage, and Restoration will be at Restoration times 2 because of Healing Grenades and Touch of Flame, we can keep getting kills and infinitely maintain those buffs, which is broken. To actually proc Radiant, we do need Ember of Torches on. This makes it so that our melee hits, not kills, just good old hits, give us and nearby allies Radiant. 
You could sub this off, but I do have Ember of Singeing to give us a lot of class ability energy back. This will make your class ability come back super quickly. I think it gives 300% increased regen for like three seconds every time you scorch an enemy. And Sunshot does apply scorch on those explosions. So this can be nice to keep your class ability up and spam rifts. Lastly, when ad clearing, because we're getting our grenade back really quickly, Ember of Searing should also try to help mitigate giving our melee back. Anytime we defeat a Scorched target, we get a portion of melee energy. Once again, we're Scorching with the explosions from Sunshot, so this should help keep our melees up more frequently. These are all the mods on screen that I'm using with the build. In the artifact, these are all the... These are all the mods I'm using on screen with the build. I'll also have a dim link and a mobilitics link in the description below. These are all the mod these are all the mods that I'm using with the build. These are all the mods on screen right now that I'm using with this build in the current setup for just general play. I do want to mention that I have Elemental Orb Solar. These are kind of nice, especially since you're doing a large portion of your ad clear with a solar primary weapon. And it's really good for helping with supplemental ad clear. On my helmet, I have a pretty unique setup, which is very important to the build, which is a heavy ammo scout and a heavy ammo finder. I do also have harmonic siphon on. This just gives me orbs of power every time I get a double kill in rapid succession with a solar weapon. That being said, in a lot of cases, it is better to have this setup where you have two scouts and one heavy ammo finder. Whenever you use an exotic primary to add clear with a heavy ammo finder, you get a guaranteed finder brick to drop every 16 kills. It's going to have a small amount of ammo, but when we're in a rocket meta, that doesn't really matter because even if it has one sword ammo, that brick is still enough to give you one full rocket, if that makes any sense. So when you run this combination, you're going to produce a ton of ammo for yourself and for your teammates. And with double scouts, that's going to be more per brick as long as those teammates are running scavengers and then max reserve mods. So as long as they have a build that they can swap to to pick ammo up with a single finder brick that I generate, they should be able to get three rockets. Hopefully that makes sense. This is extremely important and is a major reason that you want to be on an exotic primary, especially after the double special nerf. On our gauntlets, there aren't going to be too many mods that really impact the build. Most importantly, I have harmonic loader on with this and sunshot. Since there's only 12 shots in a mag, you're constantly reloading and sunshot doesn't have the snappiest of reloads. So this definitely makes a major impact. I do have shield break charge, especially if you're going into something like Crota, there should be solar shielded wizards. So this should help give you armor charge stacks if you're breaking those shields. And then I do a fastball. I honestly don't even know if this works with healing grenades. I doubt somebody's ever tested. If you know, let me know in the comments down below. But just in case, this might make it better for throwing long distance healing grenades to my allies. As always, I run three copies of damage resistance mods on my chest. And I always say the same thing. This is way better than using any other mods here for end game content. And if you ever need something like reserve mods, you can just hot swap mid encounter, pick up your ammo and then hot swap back. On my legs for even more healing, I can get 70 HP instantly back for every orb of power I pick up with the mod recuperation, and I get chunks of my grenade back. I think I get 10% energy per orb I pick up with innervation. To keep my armor charge stacks high, I do also have stacks on stacks, so instead of picking up an orb and getting one armor charge stack, I now get two. Lastly, on my class item, I have bomber so that I can place down my rift and get a portion of my grenade straight back. I use all my armor charge stacks to do special finishes. This is, again, a really good support build to gen heavy, heal our teammates, and now gen special. So that's where all my armor charge stacks are going. And then I typically default to running powerful attraction, but in end game content, it's also worth it to switch off to something like proximity ward if you want to go for those finishes against tankier enemies where you're taking a lot of damage and uh, you can get up to like, I think 500 total health with this and the damage resist that it offers. The final thing I did want to mention is you can easily shift this setup around to play much more aggressive. Sunshot will always pair super well with Verities to get you quick, reliable kills and use the explosions to build up to times five very quickly. So you could easily swap over to fusion grenades, utilize the damage increases from death throws and have an entirely different build. Let me know your thoughts on the current build in the comments down below. And I do stream a bunch over on Twitch. If you guys do ever want to come over and hang out there and play some Destiny, a link will be in my description below. As always, have a good one, guys. Peace.